I promise you, there's going to be ten to twenty guys that don't go to this this butcher's office, and there, there's a ton of people that do the same stuff in town. I'm talking about stuff that's absolutely criminal. So the reason I'm here before I get on the flight to go see my pop, who's 92, is so that that shit stops. Yeah. Because, I, I, you know, I get tired of doing revision surgeries, whether it's implants or re- revision treatments for, you know, some of this silicone. We've had to cut out stuff, and I'm, got, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of doing bet, it. I so yeah, th- this is a great venue. Right, yeah, your your demographic. These are the the men and the and the girlfriends that might be looking at this stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, don't let them go to some somebody that's gonna some you know, Joe Schmo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, there's like, something to do. And if you. you could do it safely, and you get the good result you want. That's all you need in terms of male enhancement, in terms of anything yeah. in sexual medicine and mental health. Just do it with a provider who's a specialist, and it's safe to do. Then you're on your way to a good path. There was one a case. So this is. I mean, for uh, a couple of years ago, I think there was uh, a clinic who did uh, they specialized or they were doing like uh, breast implants, and there was uh, people that were dying, yeah. and they had to yeah. shut down. Then they reopened. They changed they, they the changed name, the name yeah. and <gasps> somebody died again. Yeah. And, and so, the name. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. But there's a lot of you know, this is obviously happens to a lot more women who they get more surgery than whatever, but they either fly out of the country. And then they die in Mexico, South America, and it's all to save a couple of grand. When it's like, dude, this is your body, this is your, your health, health this your, is your life, life. just to save five grand or whatever. Triggered right now. It's I'm really, I'm really pissed off. What's up, everybody? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Coffee Breakup, starring Marvin Schultz and myself, Christian Vieira. Vieira. Thank you once again. Wait, was that beer supposed to be for somebody? I just brought it out because he said we're beer. definitely gonna have one. Yeah, I'll pass it over to them. Man. What are you doing? <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming back to another episode. Uh, if you're listening to us on Spotify, and iTunes, thank you for for you're the support. The listening thank to us on the go, uh, watching us on Patreon, most likely. Thank you so much for supporting. You guys are the best. Uh, social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. We're also on YouTube. Got clips there. Make sure you subscribe there. We got a lot of things coming out there, and we got a website. The coffeebreakup.com merchandise and some really new cool stuff is coming out. Soon. Really, really cool stuff is coming out actually. So with that being said, jump right into it. Yes, we got two gentlemen from uh Peri- Perito U- Urology. Is that correct? Is that that correct? Was Dr. terrible Perito? pronunciation. Dr. So. Perito so at Brett. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good to see you. You can call me Paul. Paul. It's easier. Yeah. I appreciate that. Paul, Brett, thank you guys for making it. Uh, on this lovely uh, Friday afternoon. Yeah, so this uh, this occurred, Brett, you had reached out to me about right. what was going on here, so right. I think it's only fair for you guys to introduce yourselves. Let us know what it is that you guys are about, where you guys come from, what it is that you guys do. Uh, that way we can jump right into it. So, Take it away. Go ahead. I got it. Right. <laughs> My name is Brett Levitt. I'm the PA with Dr. Paul Perito. Been working the, with him. For put the mic a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah. Working with Paul for about three years now. Um Basically, just learn from him. He's the expert, um, kind of like his apprentice. Uh, as for my history with you guys, you know, yeah, me, me and Christian were in SIGEP together. Shout out. Yeah, shout Ooh. out to the brotherhood, yeah. <laughs> fun time, fun time. Yeah. Handshake, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we'll show the grip later. It's top secret. But, yeah, uh, we always stayed connected. Marvin as well. A lot of party times. Yeah, good, good times. times. And now we're adults, yeah. right? Coming That's together as professionals. Right, yeah. who would have thought? And here we are with the man himself. So introduce yourself, sir. I'm Paul Perito. So I'm probably twice your age. I'm um, 61. Man, am I 61 or 62? I'm, you can tell dementia is yeah, just yeah, starting to set in. <laughs> so I was, um, I, I was at Emory undergraduate, and I wasn't really sure about medical school. I was either going to buy a bar or I was going to go to med- medical school. And somehow I took Very the relatable. other route. Yeah. No, it <laughs> goes back, way way back. Then uh, went, went to med school in Maryland, came down here to Miami, which, which is a place I always wanted to be, and did a couple years of general surgery, four years of urology, did a fellowship in Australia. Then I came back here, I came back to Miami as a urologist. And you can either join a practice, you can join... A hospital or you can hang a shingle and hanging a shingle as a physician is scary as shit it's really scary because you know you don't have contacts you don't have patients and the contacts that i had way back then it was uh there was a great doctor an hiv specialist and he and his husband were very close friends of mine 
So I gave a talk, gay sex on South Beach, and, yeah, and so I had up a on that, practice yeah. in a night. There was about 500 guys showed up to the Raleigh Hotel, and I started my practice with nothing but gay men. If you go to my office, it's got some really nice art. <laughs> it's well, well appointed, thanks to my patients, and I still take care of you know a lot of them. It's been about 27 years, so been a while that's awesome so you are you're a urologist and you but you special like you have your own clinic in Cold Gables right yeah well, he has so a few because I think your partner is also you got people in like Columbia also I believe. It's, it's, so we have a, a couple of interesting avenues that we went on so you know yeah I started with the uh, gay sex on South Beach and you know erectile function and dysfunction is a big deal it's a big deal for all men whether or not you're gay or straight and it, I got into that, and then I got into the surgical treatment of erectile dysfunction. And we pretty much, we patented a, a procedure that changed the way you, you do penile implants, which we'll maybe talk about for a little bit. And uh, we just soared, and we've been number one in the world for like 13 years doing penile implants. During that process, I learned a lot about <laughs> men, and, you know, all of us are focused on our dicks. There's no doubt about it. But then... We started looking at ways to safely accentuate what you have, what you, you know, your God-given graces are. And so that is our other outreach. So we train people how to do penile implants and our new, it's not so new anymore. Yeah, we patented this uh, girth enhancement procedure about what, five, four or five years ago. And now we have partners in Brazil, Colombia, all over the U.S. that are using this patented technique for girth enhancement. So we can talk about just about anything you want to about a dick. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> right. And that includes, you know, testosterone, uh, you know, erectile function, um, you know, cosmetics. We can, whatever yeah, direction absolutely. you guys want to go. Absolutely. Uh, that's pretty much all we do. Awesome. For sure. But just to, before we dive into it, I just want to clear things up. What is a penile implant? Because people are going to listen to it and be like, yeah, well, what so exactly? You, you give me yeah, a new dick? It's not like I transplant, uh, you know, somebody else's dick to you. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, because if I can pick, which, I pick Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> give me Shaq. I pick him. <laughs> baby's arm. <laughs> Everybody wants a baby's arm. Um, it, it, a penile implant is something, and it is an interesting, you know, route that my career has taken. It, it's a pathology when you can't obtain or maintain an erection. It's a pathology. You know, when you're looking at cosmetics, it's not a pathology. That's an anxiety disorder. It's just something more that you want. <clears throat> but when your penis isn't working and everything else fails, and I know you've had previous specialists that talk about injections and other, you know, there's pills, injections, and mm -hmm. then there's finally a penile implant, which, believe it or not, was the first treatment for erectile dysfunction. The very first treatment ever for erectile dysfunction was a penile implant. And this, you know, there's several types. We're not going to go into a deep dive. Sure, sure. But it's something that allows your penis to function and gives you a penetrating penis whenever you want it. And it's, it's the real deal. And it's, it's probably one of the most nuanced procedures that we as urologists do. Um, but it is, it's like the end game. But if you're smart, you make that end game your first game you know, when you really need it. Okay. You don't suffer from erectile dysfunction and throughout your life. And it, it's surprising. I think our mean age for patients that are getting a penile implant is about 48. Okay. So that's surprising. You know, you guys are in your 30s. Yeah, almost, yeah, we're yeah, almost yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> you almost there. Huh? You ready we ready do. For a penis implant? I don't know, dude. I'm, we maybe. do tons of guys between 20 and 30. We, we had to write a paper on that recently because a lot of academic institutions do not believe that they think it's all psychogenic, but it's not. So that's a pathology that we treat. And, you know, these days you can buy pills, you can buy shots with the phone call. Yeah. You know, which oh, yeah. That, that's sure a whole other that. conversation. But um, a penile implant is a device that's inserted surgically, and the way we do it is is pretty neat. That's why we are pretty busy that way. Is this a, a permanent solution? Because I think I've heard of s similar things in the past. I think there was one. I don't, I don't want to say the name because I'm not even sure of it. But it's it's literally just like almost, it's like the shape of a penis that goes around, I guess you would call the shaft, right? It goes around it. Yeah, it, it would, be, but it was like a permanent boner, essentially. Like it was always just a shower's. Type yeah, of well, the, the very first implants were called uh, malleables or semi-rigids. 
And these were basically silver core surrounded by silicone. So you're always hard, uh-huh. right? And you bend it down when you don't want to use That's... it. And you can't conceal it. And God forbid you're in the vegetable aisle and somebody walks by and says, oh, he's a pervert. Uh, and you try to bend it up and it, it would kind of wag around. But that was the very first treatment for penile implants. And we're actually giving a talk this year at the American Neurologic Association. It's been 50 years. And that was the very first treatment for erectile dysfunction. Fascinates me. It's a multi-billion dollar injury. You know, once pills came in, now there's everything under the sun, including a lot of people selling snake oil. Um, and there's there's a bunch of stuff right now. Uh, Shockwave. Wait, where's your camera? Wait, well, you got this one over there. Yeah. I'm telling you, Shockwave, PRP, stay away from that shit. That, that snake shockwave. oil, okay? This guy did talk about Shockwave. Yeah. And he was saying, he was talking about, like, this was, like, extremely innovative. Revolution, like, revolutionary. Yeah. That's what they all said. And also for yeah. women, too, did he also? They had, they had something for women. Might not be the same thing, but. I did, okay, yeah. but I did, I remember him talking about the shockwave therapy, how this was, like, it was amazing. When they were talking yeah. about it's amazing on a chalkboard, but does it work? And, you know, I, I have some of my friends that are in phase three trials, and for the most part, the shit doesn't work, you know? So, you know, you really, you got to go to a dedicated center for men's health. You know, and all of us, that's, I, you guys are focusing on this stuff now. Yeah, right? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, but, you know, a, ask Brett. You know, you had an opportunity to work at almost any place. This guy's highly qualified PA. And there's something about men's health. Maybe you can tell them, you know, that's what makes it completely different than anything else you're, you're, yeah, your I mean, it's definitely unique. I mean, because you're dealing with, Men's health in terms of patients coming in with their issues, stuff that they don't like to talk about, whether it's with a therapist, a medical professional, they come to you. So you're part therapist, part medical provider, giving yeah. them medical treatment. And you do see a lot of the shit out there in terms of mm-hmm. patients going to see physicians and they get recommendations that are basically asinine. Really? Yeah. It's scary. Um, but but is it fun reality. working in my fucking office? <laughs> that's the question he's trying to ask you. Why are you there? <laughs> yeah. Put the, mic, put the mic a little bit closer. Put, do me a favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We a have a good closer. time, you know. Yeah. We what? have a good time. We like helping people out, and we have fun doing it. We enjoy doing it. How did you guys connect? Because, Brett, like, how did you decide to, you know, to get, get into this path. route? You know, this is a funny story. Um, <laughs> so I had an offer to work in the ER. I always wanted to work in the ER at Baptist, and... I interviewed with Paul, never met the guy, never heard about him, didn't know who he was, although I didn't know about anything about urology at the time. I walk in, he's sitting on a, a throne, basically. <laughs> it's like royalty. <laughs> with, yeah. a, with a scotch in his hand, a cigar, <laughs> and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One thing led to the other, we hit it off, we have a lot of similarities. Um, we both like medicine, both like business aspect of medicine, so we hit it off, and the rest was history. Man, that's, that's awesome. That was three years ago or something? Right yeah. about, yeah. Okay. And uh, so you have your office in... in uh, oh, well, one question I had about uh, the penile implant. Do you... Is it like you just press a button? Do you have to get aroused? I'm just trying to get the technology. Uh, the <laughs> technology. Yeah. And that there's manifold answers to that, those two questions. Um, okay. You know, the way that we do it, yes, you still have that rush. Okay. Like when, when you're randy, that's an old man's term, when you're horny, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, you get that feeling and you know it's coming. Right, 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 right. But the reason you get the implant is so, you, in this case, the inflatables, you pump it through a little pump in your scrotum. Oh. Which you've oh. heard. La bombita. La, bombita. La, bombita. La bombita. La bombita. Yes. That's yeah. it. La bombita. Yeah. La bombita. It's like a little, like a little, well, it's like a little bomb. And, it's like an air pump. Yeah, just and you have it hanging like a pump. It's like a pump. No, yeah. it's inside your ball sack. But you press it on your. You yeah, so it you'll it. pump it, and the bigger your penis, the more you got to pump it, and then you get a penetrating penis. All the same sensation. Everything else is the same, but now you have a guaranteed one hundred percent of the time penetrating so penis. So even insane. after you bust, it's still. Well, you keep going, baby, keep going. if you want to. Yeah. Uh, ask Abuelo. He knows. Yeah. That's how I first found out about it. I was working with this guy, and he was like, he was always there, like talking, you know, sweet with the with like the tellers, all the female walk in. You know, they walk in. He's like, hey, one of these little older guys. Yeah. And then when I sat with him one time. I'm like, dude, but you talk about this, but you're not really like, how do you get it up? And he goes, bro, <laughs> una bombita. I'm like, what's a bombita? He goes, right in my balls. I press this button, 
and it goes up and it doesn't go down until I tell it to. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't hurt or anything? <laughs> no. If it hurt, we wouldn't be doing 500 a year, right? <laughs> it brings pleasure to everybody. Although, you never called a bombita in the airport. You know, you know oh, they want you. Oh, yeah, you don't want to. You know, they want you, right? And it's not like they, the, the, the machine, you know, that you do the x ray sees it. But they see it. it. You never. You become a grower. You're always. I mean, a shower. You're always showing. So this guy is showing, and the guy comes up for TSA and starts, you know, doing the, his thing, <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, it's just my bombita." They tackled him, beat him to the ground, dragged him to the back, and when, once they got him back, he's like, "No, it's my fucking penile implant." <laughs> it's yeah, not a bomb. you work at an airport. Can you yeah. imagine if someone's there like, "Oh, I have a little bombita in here." Everybody a little bomb. Hit him. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, bomb. That's bomb. That's bomb. Well, bomb. Yeah. Can you oh, imagine? Oh, that's fucking wild. Uh, it, it's a really, it's a cool, very, um, it, it's a niche sort of market. And it's becoming less and less of that because we, we've trained about 800 people over the last mm. 15 years and yeah, that are really becoming take. dedicated centers to, to doing this. And uh, you're going to hear more of it and see more of it. But it, it's hard. Uh, you, Andres Garcia, you guys are too young. He was a, a very famous actor. He just died like a, a couple weeks ago. And he would get on television and on Christina. You guys are too young oh, for that wait, show. Oh, wait, no, I know Christina. And he's the guy that would say, you know, hey, I've had sex with 10,000 women thanks to Perito. And, you know, that was one of the guys that really helped put me on the map. It, but it's not common to have a celebrity, you know, get behind a podcast and say, I, I got a, you know, a bionic dick, you know. Because it, it just <laughs> doesn't happen. I could imagine. So, I mean, with the amount of, of, of patients that you've seen, I'm sure some of them, may have been recognizable people or are these all just very common guys that you that you mean no, i'm sure both no but. everything, everything but you guys have also everything. seen like, all uh, you know there's 40 million men with erectile dysfunction in the u.s and the more that they're enlightened the more people you're going to see that are not going to be shilling their you know money for to to charlatans and yeah. um you, you know in, in, the implant business is growing slowly because 75% of guys and girls that put in penile implants do less than five a year. And so they have bad outcomes. So then you have the podcast where you have people talking about bad outcomes. If it's done at a dedicated center, it's 98% uh, patient satisfaction, which is better than any hip, knee, shoulder, any of that Procedure, stuff. Procedure, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think is attributing to the, um, you said it's not so much niche niche anymore for the procedure. What do you think is contributing to that? You think me, maybe people are more more comfortable about opening up about how they feel where they don't feel insecure about talking about it? Or do you think it's just more of a safety issue that now they feel like they're more confident behind the procedure? Let me ask Brett, as a younger guy, yeah, that's what, a, do, you, what do you think is, is making people come in because we see a ton of young men no and yeah. more so the fact that you guys have to deal with so many and speak to them and, and almost become like their therapist because who do they talk to about this they're not going to go to their, their therapist and say well my dick's not working right. um if, if you tell that to another you know woman maybe someone you're seeing if they already know but if they don't know that's kind of embarrassing and imagine talking to your boys about that right. so you guys are having these conversations so what do you think is attributing to them being more comfortable about doing so I think it's the education about it. Like people are more educated now because of the internet basically, but yeah. people just know more about it. They're more proactive. People are just more, you know, penis conscious, I guess you could say that they're just aware of their anatomy and they want proactive fixing. Whereas, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, it's kind of a shameful thing. People don't want to address it. Right. They're kind mm, of avoiding yeah. it until it's too late. We, we're a very puritanical, you know, country. I mean, Look at testosterone. Yeah, I mean, how many, how many, and I, I don't mean to, to put this on, you know, the, the, the wives and the girlfriends, but they're like, no, you're, you're not going to take testosterone because, you know, it's just going to make you horny. Yeah, but where testosterone does so many things I agree. beyond mm -hmm. just raising your libidinal energy. And testosterone has had a terrible name for absolutely zero reasons. Yeah. Testosterone replacement therapy, when done correctly, is that that's the fountain of youth. Yeah. All this growth hormone shit that was going around with all the baseball players, you know, and that's not what keeps people young. Most of us will drop our testosterone levels as we get older. And if you don't replace it, you're like a diabetic that does not get his insulin. Yeah. So 
uh, I, you know, our puritanical state has become far less, clearly, which mm-hmm. is a good thing, mm-hmm. I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how many marriages I've saved or broke up, but, you know, it's, it, it's now, it's, it's out there in the Ethernet. And people are talking about, you know, hey, I need a, a good, healthy sex life. And um, COVID, everybody thought COVID was going to be, you know, kill, kill our business. The second the gates opened, you and we were one it? of the first people operating in Miami, it was gangbusters because they had time at home with their partner. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why would you guys, yeah. why would they even think it's the opposite? Yeah. Like you have nothing else to do. I mean, I mean, <laughs> but everything, do it. Everything comes to life because they're at home with their wife all day long. And, and then you got nothing else to do, you know? Why yeah, not? That's yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guarantee you, you guys have friends your age that are sitting there and they've had erectile dysfunction for five years and they think it's all in their head because they just have not gone to a specialist and had a chance to be looked at to evaluate mostly vascular issues, you know, yeah. some neurologic. But, uh, you know, it, it as things are break, you know, the, the barriers are breaking down on these conversations. You know, I, I see, did we, didn't we have that guy where the parents called up? The parents were concerned about their, their son's dick, which I thought was awesome. Awesome. Great parents. They said, if the insurance doesn't pay, we're going to pay. And, you know, it, it's it's important. You know, it, it any any true psychoanalyst therapist is going to tell you half of your relationship is sex. At yeah. least. Yeah. At least. If you don't have a healthy sex life, then, you know, what you doing there? You know? what, 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 what would you say are, like, some, some causes or, or reasons as to why erectile dysfunction can happen, especially maybe at a younger age. So in this case, you're telling me I mean, about because your demographic is what? So, well, twenty to 40. twenty to yeah, between I would say 20, 30, 20, 40, 30, almost, 30. Yeah. Well, The biggest problem these days is porn. Porn is a problem because you know, we're seeing a lot more premature ejaculation because you know when they're when they're able to pick their genre and they'll pick their star, you know, then they can sort of you know hang on and they can anticipate, but then when they have the flesh and blood in front of them, you know, they pop off. We're seeing a ton of that. And th- this is something that is currently being studied, not by we're the surgical people, but by the people that are looking, looking at things from the psychiatric uh, aspect. Uh, so that you see a ton of that in young people. And then you see a ton of the erectile dysfunction that was never talked about to the point that we just had to publish this paper. This is November of last year. And in saying you need to look at 20 to 30 year olds and take them seriously. And you know, Take them seriously here, but take them seriously down here as well, because um, you know they, they it, it occurs. It, it's like the best example is varicose veins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, girls they don't get them till they're in their thirties or forties, and when they get them, they hate them. A varicose vein in a guy's dick is a shit sandwich. You're done. You're done, and that's basically what we see in the twenty to thirty year olds. And the first twenty year old that I ever implanted. I did his brother, his uncle, his father. His father was the first one in. Then the father told the son, who was 20, 20 years old. And that kid, they were from another, I I can say the state, they were from Connecticut. They fly down, and uh, I I do the son's case. Uh, The son, I don't see him for, you know, four, six months. I'm at a, this is back when they had those beach parties on South Beach. And I hear his mom's voice, Dr. Perito. And I'm at a party. I'm like, I don't want anybody to see me here. <laughs> but I'm like, where's your son? And she points across the, the pool. And there's the son sitting in front of five beautiful girls. And the son is just had never had an erection, ever. It was a genetic predilection to these, these valves going bad, just like certain families have varicose veins in the females. Really? So that... These are realities that are now coming true. What we need to do is make sure that these young men do not fall into the hands of charlatans. And that's the one thing that our societies are really focusing on is making sure that the public is educated educated and they're not falling in the hands of, you know, some, some crazies, you know, a lot of them nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And that also transfers over to young guys having low T. I wanted to get into that too. Yeah, because there's a ton. We see a ton of guys low testosterone, our age, 
Yeah. But I, I'm thinking because I've not that I've done a lot of research, but I mean, all this research gets thrown at me also now with social media and stuff. Sometimes you get the good stuff, sometimes you get the bad stuff. But I'm realizing a lot of it comes down to diet also and like rest, you know, the right the right amount of sleep in order for them to maximize their own natural testosterone. It circadian rhythm is the biggest one. Okay. Mm. Now it, when I first started practice, cops, firemen <clears throat> coming in with low T. Back then, they used to have these calendars, right? So I thought they're all juicing for the calendar, mm. and that's why they had, you know, low T. No, oh. they, they don't get proper sleep patterns, especially these firemen where they're mm. woken up, put back to bed, they're 24 on, you know. It, and that's one of the primary drivers now. You know, this stuff that's out there, you know, you, you need to suntan your balls, all this stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, so. yeah, yeah it, so. it really is yeah. stress <laughs> and, and lack of proper sleep. And you're right. If you eat right, you exercise, you sleep right, you should have normal testosterone levels. Unless yeah. there's something else which we would have to, you know, elucidate as the phys you know, physicians that take care of them. But, um, it, you know, that's a, a, that's a harsh reality that's out there, but that's just the nature of you know, this 24-7, you know, life. I didn't have, you know, email. <laughs> So I, when I would leave the hospital, I would go it? to sleep, yeah, yeah. you know, this you guys are up all night long, you know, attending to your email work. And right. it's, um, that's what's causing men to have low T, the biggest, the biggest offender. Young right. one's huge, but also what I see a lot, and because of the friends, the way you grew up, a lot of guys chronically smoking weed. <laughs> That's a oh, oh shit! Smoker. I smoke a shit ton <laughs> of weed. weed I need to stop smoking <laughs> weed, dude. If you're a chronic weed smoker, it's gonna kill your own testosterone. Ah, you fucked Damn, good. dude. That low T. Yeah, yeah, but I try to do everything else though. Hit it home. It doesn't come back. You don't just smoke weed, is it? <laughs> Fuck, dude. That's terrible, man. Because uh, I love that the, the topic because uh, you know not for Fuck. anything because because I, I I get my levels Take checked all the time, and dude. I have yeah yeah because you know I get the checkups and whatever I have actually. I think low testosterone. So, and I'm, you know, I just turned 30, but obviously in the past when I was younger, you know, I would like abuse steroids and all kinds of shit. Why are you whispering? Eh? Yeah, I was <laughs> You're talking into a mic. I don't, I don't know why I'm saying it like that. It's kind of like, oh, but yeah, like I would abuse fucking like steroids. And so I would recover. But when I check my levels, they're not like where I think sure. a normal 30 year old level should be. So I'm currently in the process of kind of like determining what would be like a good, good way to kind of combat that. Yeah, babies. I don't. You want them? Yeah, maybe, kind of, yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and there was just a, a, a recent publication <laughs> that came out, and one of the first publications came out, and I got to be very careful because one of the authors was being truthful when it comes to fertility. If you, mm, you know, yeah. if you get on, if that. you're on testosterone replacement therapy and then you switch back to the things that will drive your own testes to make testosterone, um, um, how many actually can sire children? And, and that first paper, you know, I think it was 95%, but this is all done by phone. So you don't know if that kid is really that guy's kid, okay. right? You follow me? So I would estimate, guesstimate, 80%, 90%, you'll be able to have swimming sperm that can actually impregnate somebody when you get off of testosterone replacement therapy. But there are things that young men can use besides the, the, the first three which is eat right, sleep right, get some, you know, sure. get, uh, eat right, sleep, sleep right, get some exercise. Um, I, there's a couple of ways that we can boost it. Now, people that make a lot of money off of this shit, right? Now, and I don't mean shit. Your stuff is great. I, the, I've seen the stuff that you put out, but the, some of these podcasts, yeah. it's nuts. Mm -hmm. And some of the biggest ones in the world are funded by, they sell testosterone mm. boosters, that damage your liver and have been shown don't work. Yeah. It's, it, talk about charlatans, right? Yeah. Because everybody these days, everybody's about, yeah, I got, I got to be macho and everything else. But if you do feel like your test is low, there are very safe ways of doing it. Okay, okay. That won't affect um, um, fertility. And it, you, you can get that boost that you need. And then when you have the right sleep, eat, and uh, exercise, you can get off of the booster. But you, know, you might need that booster to get back in the gym. You might need that booster but, to... But isn't the focus. idea to do TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, 
as you get older, when you, once you implement, it's permanent. Isn't that the idea? Because your body's going to start producing the natural. Yeah, because I, I heard. But then it wouldn't you just take it for the rest of your life? Yeah, I heard that. Okay, but like you guys have the art of gab. You just said testosterone replacement. Right. Yeah. All we're doing is replacing. So we're not shut. Yes, it does shut down your own what's left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But what's left, it's a finite number of cells that make testosterone. Okay. And those finite cells, as we beat them up with stress, lack of sleep, you know, then it gets harder and harder to maintain levels that make you give you the libidinal energy and everything that you need, you know, to be so, well, successful. healthy men. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's good for your brains, your bone, your heart, your dick, everything. You know, it's just it is the fountain of youth hormone that we are replacing and you're absolutely right it's replacement mm -hmm. so once you get on it you can, truly yeah you can get off of it if you want to have a kid and then we do all kinds of things to drive your testes biochemically and the number which is 95 in the literature probably more like 80 percent and uh, there, there was just a, a recent paper talking about which combination what works best for this but you know you can get it done. I did. I got twins. <laughs> Late so, in well, life. But can you can you be on TRT permanently and then still conceive children? Or yeah. Is, yeah. But, it's a, it's well, or more it doesn't make you sterile, but it'll drop your, your sperm counts below 20 million. And then you got to... Really? But yeah. what is the cause? Is it because of the excess testosterone? Or no, it's no. because you don't need to produce them anymore. Well, you suppress... The pituitary gland, which talks to your balls and says, make more sperm. Okay. Make more testosterone. So it suppresses them for both. Ah, okay. That's why, that's why I ask you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hey, you know, testosterone replacement therapy is awesome. But if right. you want to have kids, use the stuff that's out there. It's basically, if you knew anything about steroids back in the day, you know, HCG and or Clomid. Yes, certainly. And yeah. you can, you can, <laughs> yeah. but PCT the HCG stuff. is the best Booster. That's what they say, yeah. yeah. Like resizes your nuts. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Oh man, Big a nuts. bigger, bigger load. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. A bigger load. I heard, yeah. You could paint the wall with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't isn't that the hormone that women produce during pregnancy or something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it helps them ovulate. Okay, yeah, and then it. what does you take on talking about all these stuff? Uh, human growth hormone HGH. I know he had mentioned it earlier. Yeah, briefly. you did comment on that. Is that something you? So, you're laughing. I, What's so funny? Because <laughs> he's heard this a million times. Yeah. He's I, not how a many, fan. I, how <laughs> not many a fan. people come in asking for it? Every uh, day. Uh, every day. Uh, every day. Somebody like that. Yeah. 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 Peptides is just a paucity of good literature on it. Um, I, although one of my friends has put out quite a bit of good stuff. And that is a driver for growth hormone, basically, these peptides. Mm -hmm. But growth hormone, I inherited a guy's growth hormone practice when I was younger. And the first thing I saw is... Every time a baseball player got caught with it, they couldn't get it. They couldn't buy it, even at a pharmacy, right? And then when you're on it at significant doses and you get taken off of it, you're like a junkie. You look really? awful. I mean, they just feel like shit. They look like shit when they're using significant doses of it. Uh, the Mass General study, which I heard was stopped because of the uh, possible incidence of uh, increased incidence of uh, colon cancer. And what you get out of it, in addition to if you're on testosterone, for example, mm -hmm. that what you get extra is maybe, what, 5%, 10% more lean or, you know, whatever men are looking for yeah. these days. Is it worth it? Hell no. It's not. It's just not worth it. It's not, well, not worth the money. It's expensive. It's right. a very expensive biologic. And at the doses that it would... It would do yeah, just that little five percent of tweaking, you know, if you want to look good yeah. and, and feel good. I don't think it's worth it because, God forbid, you can't get it. You feel like a junkie. I always thought that was like the fountain of youth. Yeah, they said that that, that was like, like the better the, alternative. Yeah, like that. That's your body produces it and everything. Like it's just if you can get your hands on that, it's better. It's yeah. healthier. Than that's what right. I heard. But remember all those clinics? Yeah. Where are they? Shut down. Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't. Plus, you know, there's good body of literature out there says it could be risky too know? much downside versus the pros yeah. versus cons yeah, okay yeah. interesting now if you're doing to and you got to be careful these clinics they add all these anti-estrogens if you're doing testosterone replacement therapy correctly the only thing you might want to throw in there is hcg really yeah but wouldn't you want to need something to come because if you if you take the, the testosterone wouldn't like something for like the estrogen and stuff like that be required in order to no, kind of offset it's it? No, re it's required if you're using too big a dose. Ah, okay. Oh, because it wants to aromatize yeah. exactly. aggressively. 
where exactly. the estrogen wants to then start compound. That's where you get the taste. <laughs> but, but, <if> <laughs> right? yeah. but if estrogen goes up, uh, if testosterone goes up, doesn't estrogen go up simultaneously? But, okay, but it, what happens is you give that big dose, okay. and then you have a peak, uh, right? And that peak is where things start to aromatize and turn to estrogen. So if you lower that dose and you try to make it less of a sinus rhythm, mm, right? I see what you're saying. Then you don't make estrogen. That's why pellets are awesome. Pellets are just what, uh, what are pellets? They're testosterone pellets. You put it under the, in in the fat, and these things last you know three four months, and you get a nice steady state. Yeah. And you know we we don't check levels. Yeah, no. And you stay at a nice plateau. It's not this up and down, up and down, which is where you get all these excess right. estrogen. Yeah, the side effects maybe and stuff like that. Yeah, minimal downside. Okay, okay, pellets. okay. I love saying, well, "What's the side effect?" A uh, hard on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good side effect to have. And but like if you do if you do decide to do like a testosterone replacement therapy, is it something that they have to come to you to get it like on a regular basis? Is it an injection like twice a month or something like that? Or do they get like a kit that you take home and then you could just no, do it? It would on your be own? administered by No. Oh, like you, do no, it yeah, you do it yourself. Yeah. Okay. And one right. of my colleagues recently out of Texas, he recently published he can put it in the, 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 the sub sub here, yeah. sub yeah. which is awesome. You don't have to reach really? around and, and stab your butt. It's, um, you know, so we we collectively as sexual medicine experts have made it really easy for guys to replace their own testosterone at home, yeah, yeah, yeah. try to keep those peaks and troughs more centralized to so your, your median way of living. But <clears throat> the, the, the thing that cracks me up the most is when a guy says, well, you know, I, I don't want to do shots because, you know, I, I hate that up and down. <clears throat> a young man will start the morning at 1,200, say, and maybe end up at 300. So you talk, you've you lived your life up and down. Yeah, okay. So, you know, just be smart and get your testosterone replaced. And we, you know, because there's so much negative press out there, um, we keep an article in, in the office that I, you know, that I've made copies of. And the title of the article is Death by Testosterone, We Think Not which is prose, right? That's not your typical academic article. Academic articles are very sterile and scientific. Death by Testosterone, We Think Not, written by one of the smartest men ever in testosterone, Abe Morgenthaler out of Harvard, where every professor that needed it was on it, by the way. And this is, it doesn't cause heart attack, doesn't cause stroke, does not cause prostate cancer. This is all stuff I'm sure you guys have heard. Yes. You've yeah. read, sure. and it's just not accurate it's not accurate so is there something that that causes that while you're using testosterone or is it a hereditary like all these side effects that they say about no, no it's not it it's well, what, they, what they say it's cardioprotective it, it, it the studies the large studies with big cohorts of patients it's safe it's it's cardioprotective it's protective of your prostate if you do get prostate cancer it's not going to be one of the ugly ones it is the fountain of youth drug. And it, it has a bad name <laughs> mostly because of the puritanical aspects of, you know, my generation that is I think amateurs. It, <laughs> I think it's also big in, in the whole sports field that like you had said about uh, baseball. And, and it's funny because I saw a documentary that was called The Bigger, Faster, Stronger, The Truth About mm -hmm. Steroids. I told you about it. I don't know if you've I ever seen I'll it. Watch it. I'll tell you. But it was talking about how the media really made steroids, like, they made it seem so bad. And then there was a, there was a, I think it was like a cancer patient, or he had AIDS, I think it was. And he was saying, like, oh, like, I'm on these prescriptions because it helps me with, with my red blood cells, with my levels. It, it, allows, it increases them. Right. And then the question is, it's like, well, you're going to tell me that you can give a sick person steroids and they can get healthier. But if you give a healthy person steroids, they're going to get sicker. Where's the logic in that? You're, so you're, you're, that's on on pace, right? Yeah, no, but steroids, steroids. This was a testosterone. It, it, it was no, based on the medical no, side. Pure, yeah, steroids are different. Anabolic steroids are different, and there is a place for that in in growing older. Sure, yeah, without yeah. without a doubt, you know. Um, but testosterone specifically has just it it does none of it makes sense. All we're doing is putting a hormone back in you mm. that you're missing. Why would it be bad? Why it, yeah. it isn't? If it's already there, it is. Just losing it. They, Studies yeah. are kind of skewed because they look at who's on TRT. Guys who are 50 years old, more or less, yeah, usually start on TRT. Who gets heart attacks? Who gets stroke? Who gets prostate cancer? Guys in their 50s. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So it just so happens that those those gentlemen who are on yeah. TRT. 
But if they have those pre-existing conditions, there was one study like six years ago, and it, it was they a bunch of family practitioners that don't know anything about sexual medicine gave a bunch of bedridden guys a bunch of testosterone, and a bunch of them died. <laughs> you know, you can give them vitamin C, and a bunch and of them are going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it was it was immediately debunked. Immediately, they actually had to go around to all of our meetings and and correct their data. Um, so, it, and that was when you would see the commercials. Remember the commercials? Uh, oh, if you you know you just lost a loved one and was they were on testosterone. How long those commercials last? Oh just, just like God. the growth hormone yeah. clinics. How yeah. long do they last? I so money, that. you actually, you follow the money and the money is usually clinically correct mm. at some point, you know, right. there's a clinical, uh, uh, there's a uh, monetary correction that occurs in all these charlatans, all these shockwave places, all these PRP centers, uh, there's going to be a monetary correction that is in line with the, the clinical, you know, data. And that's what, and that's what. Uh, us doctors are really poor um, marketing people in general. Yeah. We're, we're, very, we're not good at it, and we don't have uh, public messaging out that's adequate you know, to tell people that all the stuff that makes you fucking happy is, is actually kind of good for you <laughs> or really good for you. So, And uh, our field, everything, everything, you know, but, you know, the pills. I remember when the pills first came out, and I was doing a lot of implants. I said, ah, you you're, not, you're never going to do implants again. It only brought in more implants because more people were like, eh, hey, you know, that pill isn't working for me. And then they move on. So there, the, it's usually the monetary correction occurs first. Yeah. And then people start to believe the, so the data, the, the data that was right in front of their face, you know. That's crazy um, how education can really impact, you know, because people like, they don't really think about these, these things or they think about, testo uh, you know, testosterone and they think of it in a negative connotation or, or you know, because some people might abuse it or whatever, but there is really a place for it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking now more than ever because if we think about it, I, I, I did the, the, the line, like the carnivore diet in January and that's when I felt, I felt the best. I felt like I can do whatever I wanted to do. Um, and basically the way that I approached it was it was it was more of like an elimination diet. Like, let me just cut out all these processed foods. Let me just take out all this garbage that I'm putting in my body. And I felt I just felt superhuman at that point. My body just felt efficient. I, I honestly felt like my testosterone was to the roof. I was I was lifting more. My, my body was just transforming in ways. And I just feel like now um, with dieting and I don't want to, you know, shit on vegans or anything like that, but it almost feels like. When you look at the back of these packages and what's on this beyond stuff, it's almost, I can't pronounce half of that shit. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be eating this stuff. How is this supposed to be helpful for me naturally? So, and I realized that when I just come, they just ate pure beef and, and what else was I eating? Beef, fat fruit. and fruit and fruit is what I was eating. I felt like that was, that that's what changed everything for me. So I'm also thinking with all these implementations moving forward, especially now with society of like, um, I don't want to get too like political, but you know, kind of accepting more of like this whole changes when it comes to like the the whole gender stuff. So we're eating a little bit differently. We're we're having all the like the nutrition that's not the same as it was before. Um, what would you say would be the best? Because you had said eating, sleeping, and 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 uh, what was the other? It was eating, sleeping, and exercise. And exercise. <clears throat> what would you say would be like the the proper diet that would be in order to help someone? Okay, I'm not a dietitian. But the, the one thing that I definitively know, and, and it makes sense, is when you have somebody that says, yeah, you know, I'm on testosterone, I'm working out, and things just aren't, I, I'm not losing weight. What diet should I get on? I don't, I don't even approach what they're putting in their, their cake hole. I say, what time are you eating? Ooh. And it's, it's the people that eat after, you know, most of us go to bed at what, midnight? 11, 10, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, right? Yeah. So if you start, if, if you eat after, say, 6 or 7 o'clock, you eat at 6 or 7 and then you have a snack afterwards, which so, ma so many of us do when we're watching television, that's the worst because you know, your body at that point has already stored all of the, 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 the easy ca calories, the glucose and all that stuff in your liver, and now it's looking for a place to put it. And because you're not active, 
it, and you're, you end up sleeping, it stores it in the central aspect, which is called ment- metabolic syndrome. And that is what makes people not feel good. And I'll bet you when you were eating properly, you didn't eat a burger at, uh, or a steak at 9, 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. You were eating it at your normal hour, and you're, you're sated. So you don't need that extra stuff. That's the biggest, <clears throat> when it comes to diet, if you can not eat after 7 o'clock, and if you're going to bed at the, you know, the routine time, then I would leave everything else up to the dietitian to be yeah, able to yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, sure, you know, sure. but if you, if you eat clean, if it looks like food, eat it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it's a donut, you clearly it doesn't look like food. Yeah, I'm trying to do anything possible to raise my testosterone naturally. But you know, it's funny that we're talking about that because when, the last time that I went to my physician, I asked her, I'm like, hey, I think, you know, I'm turning 30. I want to get my testosterone checked. And she looks at me and she goes, but why do you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's I, I told. Yeah, I realize that now. Now that I'm more like you know conscious about it, it's that's like a huge red flag. It's actually and, pretty typical with primary care doctors, so it's weird. Really? Yeah. Oh, so it's so it's, this is normal. Well, but but although it shouldn't be here What's in normal, Miami, normal that they don't do it, or normal that they that they don't do it. Okay. They don't. They don't, don't check. It. Yeah, because when when I, I'm it's sorry, it's their norm. Yeah. It's not. I, oh, I it's see not. What you're but it shouldn't be. No. It shouldn't yeah, because be. when I asked it, I told this to somebody else, and they're like, "What do you mean you haven't gotten your? Like, you've gotten your testosterone check? Yeah. I get you my see what I mean? Like you're a thirty year old guy. Like it's important to know this stuff. And so she's like, "Okay, look, like you look good. And and when she's seen me years over year, like year over year, she, like she knows me. And she's like, "Oh, you look like you've lost weight. Like you look athletic. Um, like I was literally there in gym clothes. She's like, "If I were to do, if I were to t- like check for your testosterone, and let's say it comes out low, do you feel like it's low?" I'm like, well, no, not right now. She goes, exactly. So then what if it does come out low and now I'm going to have to prescribe you testosterone when you don't even feel like you need it? I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, true, no, but, but I feel like I should know but also for like, my overall health. But also, like, you may not feel it, but you, maybe you don't know what it's like to have good testosterone. Right. Because you, you might feel like this is how I'm supposed to feel, but you've never, maybe you haven't felt with high testosterone in a, in a long time. So it's like, well, this is my normal because that's all I know. You know what I'm saying? Does it make sense? Like, of course that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So it's like, damn. So you, not, you should have been like, well, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's so. Maybe I don't know how it's supposed to be feel to have high testosterone. Damn. Maybe you do your levels and you have like 400, and it's like, well, you're young, you're healthy, you're athletic. Your levels should, maybe should be a lot higher than that. So it's like, and you know? and really mm. nobody, <laughs> except for those that study sexual medicine, know what the proper norms are. Um, so it, in general, the family practitioners, it, you know, it, it might come back 400, uh, three, 360, 350 or below is abnormal, needs to be treated. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, for a morning level. So, it, it, you know, family practitioners, uh, not to shit on them, you know, but they, they just don't have this, uh, this data in front of them. They need to understand that it, get that guy back to where he was when he was 20, yeah, and he's like, "Oh my God! Now I I, I see what I've been missing. Now I feel amazing because yeah, I, 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 I feel yeah. I, I, what, what I had before, and I see what I've been missing. And there's zero downside to it, you know. And you know, you don't want to jump on TRT early when you're wanting to have kids, but if you need to replace it, start because it's a pathologic state. That's what you tell your family practitioner. If it's low, it's pathologic." It's not good for my bones, my brains, my heart, my you know, anything. So if it ain't good for it, it, let's you know at least have an option to treat it. And with the the soft options that are not testosterone, that are real, they're not this junk medicine. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a, it's it's safe, and I, then you'll be like, wow, man, you know, my exercise is better than it's ever been. I'm actually seeing progress because I now you're a little young. You'll see in about five years, you're like, man, I'm not getting the gains I used to. And, you know, depending that's upon, true, true. And, and here in Miami, so many people are from foreign countries where they had mumps or something like that from, as a kid. So they have even lower levels. There's zero wrong with checking a more, uh, morning le- uh, level of testosterone. And, and if that little boost helps you, great. If it doesn't make a difference, you're right. You know, okay. why treat something they broke? But... <laughs> We do this because we know the guy's going to have a low level. We'll give him a shot, and we'll say, yeah, just keep a mental diary of how you felt this ah. week. And they're like, fuck yeah, where do I sign up, you know? Because it's because the thing, this is, because I, when I got mine, because mine is, because the, 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 the range between what's normal is so large. 
Like yeah, what you, is it? Because it's like what from three fifty all the way up to like nine eighty. Yeah, if you look like? at if you look at your lab with Quest or Lab Core, whatever it is, it's going to be two fifty. Yeah, the range then two fifty, which is not correct. Is not yeah, which is crazy. Because yeah. so so mine are like at at four four seventy, which is not really that high. But at thirty, did you check would, your free testosterone. My free, my free testosterone is low too. My that's free, low. Yeah, and the bio. That's the only. That's yeah, that's the only terrible. thing that's available. Yeah, so your total doesn't even matter if your free is low. You're not even using that total. So, but if the if the to, if the free is 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 low, then that means you need something. Yeah, for treatment. I need something. Yeah, yeah. you you basically yeah. you have proteins that are binding it. Yeah, proteins that your liver Holding wants to make for whatever reason that'll okay. bind it. And one of them being sex hormone binding globulin. So, if you have a low free T, you need to have something to help get you there. But oh, if, if I still want kids, then I can't do TRT. What's but what I, I already do? told you, we got I got to so swing by your Chris clinic. You, this is your buddy. Yeah. This is your new buddy. Bro. I'm going to yeah. swing by the fucking <laughs> clinic, dude. I'm going to fucking hit you up. I, I got, got something. Pro bono for you. Come yeah. on. <laughs> There's safe, you know, TRT, uh, testosterone boosting the proper way. Okay, okay. It, it's safe. Everything is safe. And there's so much... You know, there's 1,800 papers on testosterone replacement therapy with not one of them being bad. I named the one mm -hmm. that was debunked within six months of it coming out. Wow. Is there a goal as to where you want to fall within the spectrum of healthy testosterone ranges? And the reason I asked is because I saw, again, another video. And it was, um, and it was, it was of a doctor talking about like, yeah, like they talk about that they're in, they're within the normal range, but why not maximize the normal range? It, you know, we, we don't. Does that even matter? They you were making it seem. You think more? They is were better? saying it yeah. no, like still, because if the range is just like you're saying, like it's a really broad spectrum. But it's like, well, I don't want to be right in the middle. I don't want to be within the yeah, spectrum. I want to maximize. Yeah, no, not that I want to like blast and be like you, but it's like <laughs> I want to feel my best. And if you're going to yeah. tell me that the the normal goes up to this number, why wouldn't I want to be closer to the... There's the certain things because if you have normal levels and you get on, you're going to suppress your own production and then you're going to be hypogonadotropic. And then it's just going to lead you to having low T and you got to stay on it for life. If you don't need it at that point, there's no reason to get on until your symptoms or your levels indicate to do so. And we're not treating a number. We're treating, we, we're on the same page as your family practitioner. If they're feeling good, we've done our job, uh, right? You got it? Got it. You know, what's interesting is they, they both have, must have big dicks because they're not talking about dick sure. size. I don't care about the dick, man. I'm good on the dick. I'm good, with my, I'm good with my dick. I need that test to go. No, I was waiting for you to bring it up because you're the one with the, <laughs> with the low, small dick. Well, now that we talked about it, I mean, I guess... Um, it's it, it's when we talk about these these uh, implants, it also increases length. Oh, is it, this it's is a just different. A, it's just a, to yeah. So for size augmentation, totally different. That would be more of a, like a cosmetic thing. Or? So yeah, that's our cosmetic branch of our office, uh, which is called Eurofill. Euro Eurofill. Talk to us about that Eurofill. because I also was reading that that also affects the girth and it also helps girth the and, girth and resting length. Uh, Paul invented this patent so you could take it away. Oh, I was reading it. Yeah. But, but you mentioned something that, you know, the the implant makes a penis bigger. No. <clears throat> the only thing that makes a penis smaller is erectile dysfunction. Okay. Once, the only thing that will stop that atrophy. So once a guy is not getting 10 erections a night, well, it's actually somewhere between 6 and 10. It, you'll, you'll get 10 erections for 10 minutes during the night. Once that stops, you start to lose length and girth. Everybody loses length and girth once rendered impotent whether it's by um, removing the prostate <clears throat> or, you know, you smoke too much, you know, those guys start to shrink. A penile implant will stop that shrinkage, give you function back, and then you can grow some back you know, with, you know, this is beyond the scope of tonight, but the, the implant actually will grow inside the penis, but you're not getting it to make your dick bigger. Now, unless you have a big fat pad above your penis, there's nothing that makes a penis longer. You know, there's guys that do jelking. I didn't even know what jelking was. Oh, yeah, it's like stretching yeah. the penis or something. We had a guy come in, had an injury from jelking too hard. I swear, you hear that? <laughs> from what? Jelking. You never heard of jelking? I, no, what is that? 
Supposedly, you like Suppose. have to tug on it, right? <laughs> oh, like the penis pump? You like no? Nah. You have to you tug on it, right? Or yeah. you stretch you it? Like, yeah. Basically, you jerk off while you're soft. This guy explained it to me because I had no idea either. And we work in sexual medicine, <laughs> so this is something you, you read online yeah. when you're. I guess he said I was watching porn and it said, "Oh, I can make my dick bigger by oh, doing this." You yeah. click on it, yeah. yeah. The, the doctors hate him. How you many times have that? you clicked on it? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Targeted ads now. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, yeah, to make a dick bigger, we have that aesthetic, you know, business with okay. it. Okay. So that's where guys can get size, and where guys can get size is what girls want ultimately, which is girth. Yeah, because a, a, a vagina, it, you only have about that much sensate area, and uh, they, their G spot is basically an internal penis, and it's, yeah. it's within this realm. Ah, okay, okay. So length is really not what matters, at least to the vagina. Uh, it's more girth and. When it comes to length, I'll say it over and over again. Nothing makes a dick longer, except for removing fat from the fat pad above the fupa, whatever you would call it, you know, above the penis. You can remove that, you know, through liposuction or what they call a mons lipectomy. But when it comes to length, yeah, okay, let me ask you guys something. Okay, how many guys, say one out of 100, one out of whatever, how have a seven-inch or bigger penis? What's a minority? Maybe one one out of it's, 100? Yeah, yeah. One, one out of 30, okay? Okay. But everybody that comes in our office is like, yeah. I got an 8-inch eight dick, and I love pulling out the rule and say, shut the fuck up. It, you know, Were they measuring oh, from no their asshole? You didn't go <laughs> They're measuring <laughs> from their no, asshole. No, no yeah, wonder dude. you didn't go into engineering. You would have <laughs> built a building that fell down. <laughs> uh, so, 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 you know, one, once men understand that, and they never will. They, everybody's always looking for something that makes the dick longer. And whoever invents that is going to, you know, get a Pulitzer Peace Prize or something. Because <laughs> maybe we'll stop all the wars. But <laughs> when it comes to girth, you know, you know, when I was doing all these implants, because everybody complains about loss of length and girth. Okay. So I was like, what can I do to help these guys, you know, to help them with girth? And there was a bunch of stuff that was being done at the time. And I did some stuff, you know, experiment with, with some materials to make the penis fatter, you know, but it was finally hyaluronic acid, which I'm sure you guys have had somebody here that talks about injecting lips or butts and stuff yeah. like that. But the, <clears throat> hyaluronic acid is a chemical that's in your skin. And if you can use that on the penis using our patented technique, you can actually get girth and the girth it, you know, it is significant as well as the increase in resting length because now you have these columns that are, you know, holding your penis so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't shrink. It doesn't telescope back. Now, this is a, it's a patented technique. There's been a lot of, there's a ton of people injecting all kinds of stuff all over the country. Uh, there's one right here in our backyard injecting liquid silicone, which is criminal, fucking criminal. Yeah, and you guys, I'm not going to say the name, but you guys have seen the billboards and stuff. Uh, you really got to watch out for the people in this in industry because, you know, first thing, it's a real, it's, it should be something that should be offered to men because, you know, there's tons of studies that show that, yeah, if you take a, a cohort of like 10,000 men and you ask them, okay, so do you think you have a normal-sized penis? And the normal size penis is in this very nice standard, you know, cone, right? And <laughs> and they they all fall into, let's say all 10,000 fall into it. At least 50% will say, my dick is small. And they call that penile anxiety disorder. Now, are they going to blow their brains out for this? No. But if they were offered something that was safe and efficacious, they do it. And so that's where... You know, we started to see, you know, a, an avenue to, to actually monetize this thing. I was doing it just because I was so tired of my patients saying my dick is just so much smaller because I, you know, but it was the erectile dysfunction. Mm. But what about the guys that just want a little bit more? And that's what COVID, I mean, when COVID hit, guys were like, I want this shit. You know, I paid for breasts. I paid for this. I, it's my turn. My turn. My turn. I earned this. I earned this exactly. dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, it, you know, it is, it, you know, it's, it's a really <laughs> cool technique that can give that. It's 25% it's of us that are walking around the street. Uh, that we would definitely, you know, jump on board because it's safe and effective. I mean, just like breast implants. 
and you know that's pe- where it came in. I think was huge. It was revolutionary because women, their breasts, their they, do butts, whatever, they do everything. Their face, they do everything. What do we, we do? Nothing. Yeah, and we get bitched after doing testosterone replacement. Yeah, that's therapy. what I'm saying. <laughs> we yeah. can't win. We can't win. <laughs> so now you, you get a give us something. So is there ever like a limit as a how like too big? <laughs> what if you got a guy who's dr- like dragging his dick inside and he goes, "Hey, longer, bigger, fatter, we stronger." Got a, we got a couple <laughs> we of those. <laughs> we got a couple. We're like, I don't know where you put that thing. But. <laughs> Just wrap it around his leg. But yeah, I mean, everyone has a capability. You're. Sh- Skin stretch capability. Oh. Personally, we like you know we tell guys you know you you look good there. You just want a little bit more. Some guys go above and beyond how most men do, but we try and keep <laughs> them in the realm of you know a natural looking girth augmentation. Fuck. Too bad. I also feel like back to what we started off with with porn. I feel like when you when you're watching certain scenes because mm. these guys are professionals where they they make sure that you get the right length, the right size, like everything you know. Which I wouldn't doubt that a lot of them also do these procedures if not injections and a bunch of other things i mean i've heard a bunch of stuff right so it's like i feel like if if those people who are watching a lot of porn they're comparing their maybe to like, normal to like dicks the, to yeah. these Penile anxiety disorder uh, and they, they say that's one of the things that is lent to this and it, it's it's not a pathology this is different than dysmorphia yeah where oh. you look at yourself and you're like they don't you know it's like bodybuilders that don't see how big they are mm. you know it, it just uh, this is not dysmorphia. This is just something like, if I could have a little more, why not? And and it, porn is a big player in this yeah. because, you know, who wouldn't want to have a porn dick, you know? I mean, <laughs> oh, I you can got, make it I happy. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, the, the breast, it, breast implants, there was, it, guess how many breast implants were done in the U.S. last year? Well, I'm sure like uh, 80% of it was done down here in Miami. <laughs> uh, if I had to give a number, I don't know. And how much is too much? I feel like everyone has fake tits. Everyone has fake tits these days. too normal. Yeah. 400,000 breast implants in the U.S. And I think there were 600,000 in Brazil. There was only 18,000 penile implants put in the U.S. And I, I did 500. So, it, you know, we have not taking care of ourselves and i'm not peddling these products i'm just saying that you know it, 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 men need to be educated that things are available and when done in the right, right. hands it can be done safe and effectively and you know it, it the the plastic surgeons have done a fantastic stand-up job when it comes to breast and well but there's been some issues okay yeah, 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 which yeah. uh you guys should definitely do a po- podcast on that stuff because there's a lot of dangerous stuff in Miami, and there's a lot of good stuff in Miami when it comes to butts. But we need to get a professional on, like who kind of specializes. Like yeah. You know somebody. <laughs> you know, like somebody. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, you, know, you can go to a strip mall and get just about anything done. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> professional. So that's if you go over to Hialeah, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get the dentist to give you implants too. <laughs> the dentist will give you best implants. Get down the street for sure. That would be a that would be a great podcast. <laughs> okay, actually, that's actually a really good idea. We you were gonna say it. something. You like bumped me with um, something. You like bumped me super. Yeah, excited. because because with, remember when we had on the porn store and she was like, "Oh, like which that one?" We had a couple on. I think it was. Um, it doesn't matter. Whatever. And she was like, "Oh yeah, like a, the average guy's dick is I don't know eight inches or whatever." And it's like, well. All the guys that you fuck, I'm like yeah, yeah duh, of yeah, course. Yeah. But it's because it's like all the girl, all, all the guys who are in the industry have large dicks. But it's like saying every guy is six foot six. When to the people who are in the NBA, you know yeah. they all they play, they're they're, they're they're so big, so so tall. So it's like if me, I'm like five nine, and I just watch basketball, and I'm like, well, I'm super short because I'm not six five. Comparing so, yourself to yeah. So when I watch porn, and it's like, well, everybody has a big ass dick, and then it's like me, they're like maybe you know I have a small dick. And it's not the reality. Now you you need to yourself. compare yourself to people with small dicks. Like you, I, I'm gonna compare dicks. myself with you. Nah, I see your dick. Oh shit! <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Hey, it's five point five inches. It's, it's the average from, from stem to stern. Right, the yeah, that's the average. And truly, that you know. Darwin, that's a rector. Darwin classic. or God Direct. made that bell right. curve wow, pretty good. steep so that <laughs> you know, like, nobody is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, microphallus is extremely rare. And like I said, you know, over seven is one out of 30. So most of us fall in that nice bell curve. 
Women are happy. You know, they're, they're happy with that length. You know, girth, yeah, you can add a little bit more. Our favorite is when the wives come in and they go, I want a little bit more right here. Just right here. No way. Because they, come they in, know right where they feel They request it. it. They want, yeah. I want some HA, hyaluronic acid. Can you inject it right here? Because... That's what gets her off. Oh, yeah, because, like, what if there's, like, a... Because where is, is the, the spot? Isn't it, like, on the, the inside The G-spot is up, up the roof. So, anteriorly on so the roof. So, wouldn't you... You the... probably want people to have maybe, like, a little button on top or something, right? <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> so well, you it... want a nice curve there. I'll never forget this chick. I, I can't say her name. Her husband's just a badass, and he's got a giant fucking dick. And, he, and, <laughs> and, and and I'm like, what are you doing back here? And she's like, I just want a little more right here. And I'm like, but what for? And she pulls out her phone, and she's showing me porn, right? Porn, yeah. the point of view, you know, and saying, like, look at my husband's dick like this, because see this. And I go, you want me to look at your husband's dick like I'm sucking it? You <laughs> just fucked up my job, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call my mom Look at say, it from this oh, angle. I want to retire, mom. <laughs> this is too weird for me. <laughs> but but, but that's, that's when suddenly, it, you know, plastic surgery for women has been fun. Yeah. We, we've enjoyed it. We yeah. have I'm benefited. On board. Yeah, I'm we're on board. up for it. And <laughs> you know, and, you know, it's it, it's their it's their right and their, you know, they they get pleasure out of doing it. So why why can't we? And the best, the first reality I had, and I had a big reality tonight with you guys. A big light bulb went off. Testosterone. It's the same thing. You know, why have we been told this is something we can't do? And it's not women in general. Although I did say that, you know, a lot of wives yeah. hate my guts because, you know, these guys get all horny, you know, for somebody else. But that, that's not everybody, clearly. But, yeah, that's a big realization that that we've been told not to do a lot of cool stuff, fun stuff, and safe stuff. So and if the, anything comes out of this podcast, I would hope that that would for sure, be I, something. I, I, I yeah, really the girls do. are getting all the fun. It's time that we get it. Get yeah. But they get fun. <laughs> I, I can't remember her name. <laughs> If I said her name, her no, you husband, didn't. You didn't. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. You didn't. <laughs> and we'll beep, beep, beep. Oh, and no, you didn't. Um, so I, I just have one question. Um, how does it work? Like, do you guys have walk-ins? And then, if you do take on patients, do they just get naked? Do they have like? How do you do kind of? You wanna do, wanna role play? Let's let's pretend you're the patient. Walk in through the door, and then they'll like, check how, you out. Because like, how does that work for you guys? Well, I'll put it on OnlyFans. I have fucking dicks to see every day. <laughs> no, the best was this asshole, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, you come in, in our office, you know, we might examine just your dick in the office, but then you might have to go to an examining room. And if we're doing any, you know, if we're doing girth or we're doing something, you know, that's in the exam room, right? But <laughs> this is a funny fucking story. <laughs> so, so I, you know, he's probably pretty new in the office, and, and, you know, he knows that there's this one area in the office that there, there's actually a patio door leading out to the patio where I examine guys' dicks, right? And he, you hold his balls, you fucking, you know, do the penile stretch test on his dick. And, right, so the, the, I know the guy. And, you know, he, he's a friend of mine. He goes, man, I, I think I have something on my ass, right? I go, I just turn around, right? And so he's now turning around. He's facing the door. And I'm literally got my hands opening his ass and... Brett comes walking in and he's like stops and he shuts the door. I go, open the fucking door. <laughs> oh, it's like, hell no. I see a guy bent over. I don't see Paul's face. Like, and his what? asshole. <laughs> what is going on? Ah, that's oh a, my uh, god. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily he had been there for a few months. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was your first, first day. day. <laughs> <laughs> first yeah. first and last day. Yeah, yeah. You know, walked out of there. Yeah. Oh man! Imagine because you met him like uh, when you went to go speak to him. He was there sitting in the throne with a scotch and a cigar. And then the first day you would have gone yeah. to work is him and some guy's ass. You'd yeah. be like, Where am I? Where am at I least, for? at least keep me informed. <laughs> informed consent of what you're gonna do to me, right? Oh man! Yeah, um, so you get a full, full. Uh, that's funny. You get a full examination. Do you? How many people work in your office uh, at this moment? Do you have multiple staff? We have. A, we have about ten people that work the office. Um, yeah, you know, we have, you're right, we have a bunch of, um, what would you call them, we, uh, certified providers for the, uh, for the girth uh, all mm -hmm. around the globe. Um, but when it comes to our private office, our, our local sweat equity, it's, you know, here in Core Gables, and there's about 10 people that work there. And it's, it's, it's like your office, you know, it's something where you just want to, 
I, I want to have fun. You know, yeah, clinic, yeah. I, I love operating, but okay. we made our office. Our, our office is pretty fun. I our think. office is fun. I go home with stories all the time. Uh, I, yeah. I was like, you guys need a TV show. <laughs> like, Yeah, man. So never. No, yeah. Never. Stuff could never get out. But never, yeah. ever, ever. You guys ever probably have. seen some crazy shit. You hear it and you see it every single day. It's no, but you can have, you know, actors portraying, oh, you know, the uh, the patients. No. Change the name. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> And we did a we did a piece for HBO, and this is back when it was it was just too scandalous for HBO. Um, today it would fly, but uh, but in retrospect, it's just not a good idea, you know. To to yeah. any rela- reality show with medicine, I was thinking I, that I think it's might just not too cheesy a little it's bit. not a good idea. There was one with um, you seen the show Botched? Yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, I, I've been at conventions where those guys are there, and they're great guys. But I just, it's, I don't know. I, I don't think that's the right way to to, to go about to, this to, business. Yeah, and you always end up get kind of getting brought down in the mire, you know, of because yeah. these documentary specialists, they're looking for scandal. They're looking yeah. for you know, yeah. cheese like, Is that what they call it? Cheese man, cheese man, cheese man. Yeah, cheese man. yeah. Cheese man. yeah. yeah but, uh, but but I'm I'm thinking now to your point, like now how it's almost you would open up with it. It's not so much a niche anymore. I feel like now since there's more education behind it, um, probably wouldn't even be that bad of an idea because you're almost like encouraging people to be more educated about what it is that you guys go through while still the, making it fun. It gets, it gets it, done it, the right it, way, maybe. Yeah, it has, it it has to get done the right way. You'd have to get the right guy. The right guy or right girl to... To produce it, yeah. but and you know, Netflix. and then you got to have, you know, you got to have patients that are open and not freaks, and you know, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> hard, <laughs> yeah, how you interview these yeah. people, um, <laughs> and uh, the people that we did this piece for HBO years ago, I uh, Vice Vice did oh, a piece on us, yeah. Uh, yeah, watch it, and it, it there's a little bit of a hit job there, really, um, it, it's it, it's actually fairly informative, um, fairly. you know, fairly. <laughs> Informative, and you know, but yeah, 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 news outlets don't always have your interest, um, and and for especially for physicians and patients, there's there's such an intimacy that yeah. uh, you got to mm. really be careful. Thus, the HIPAA, you know. Mm, I, mean, yeah. I would love to tell you this wife's name because she fucking cracks me up. But you know, what I mean. Um, at, so, no. Yeah, they'll always portray stuff in different ways. We have our own way. You know, he said education is important. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, Alfie, our research fellow, created this called Meet the Penis um, on YouTube. About 75 episodes now. Uh, so it's basically just informative in terms of penile implants, in terms of men's health, sexual mm-hmm. medicine. We started one with urophil for specific girth enhancement questions. And these are all questions from patients. They submit to us oh, cool. and we answer them. As basically it helps us out. We're not answering the same question over and over and over again. Sure. True. Uh, true. And it's providing education at a mass quantity. And and the same mantra it every single time is <clears throat> we're not here selling Pareto urology. We are here to make sure that you go to a dedicated center. Don't get harmed. Okay. Yeah. That's that's and, and it's what's so wonderful is the the patients come up with the best questions. I, I'll I'll lecture to a room of three hundred and fifty uh, doctors and they don't have one intelligent question and then patients will come up with the best stuff and then the the, the mantra is at least go to a dedicated person somebody that's not going to sell you snake oil not going to hurt you because there are guys that are out there hurting people as we speak yeah probably just trying to focus more on the profits of whatever their business is operating right. rather than just looking after the patient to do the right thing by them right Gotcha. I had one more question because uh, you did bring up some really good points in terms of finding the right provider and the right you know physician. Um, is there a way for for the consumer or for a potential patient to kind of weed out some of the bad ones, some of the bad actors, or you, you, you really what got are you looking for? You, you got to look at you know board certification. You, okay. you got to look at societies. Uh, it, uh, societies are getting much more active okay. in saying who has ongoing accreditation. Uh, the reality is, especially, uh, <clears throat> this is something that I wanted to tell you. There's a there's a difference. Insurance and cash. Oh, true. Yeah. When you have things that are insurance, for the most part, there's some regulation on people's qualifications. In cash, like you said, one of you, one of you guys said, a dentist is doing breast implants in a garage, and I know I, I've heard of this yeah. here in Miami. 
Um, and there's there's guys that they have an MD, but they never held a dick at all during their training. And that now they're calling themselves a penile surgeon and they're, they're injecting scary, silicone. And, and these are things that have been well documented, are extremely, extremely dangerous. Then you have the beauticians that really understand the cash pay. They learn enough, but God forbid you got a problem, then you're fucked. Okay, and then they come to us. Right, and, right, and right. In our industry, we you you had somebody on that would talked about injection therapy for penile uh, erections to get an erection. That that started at one of my societal meetings in 1983. It was Doctor Brindell. He got out from behind the podium after he had injected himself. 400 urologists in the room. His dick was rock hard. First time anybody used this vasoactive substance on their dick, and we lost control of that. Urologist did. Uh -huh. You had somebody on where they were talking about you could just make a call. And a non-doctor gives you something that you could destroy your penis with in one shot if it's not done properly. And that's our societal problems. And this is something that I, before I retire, I'm going to make sure our societies give ongoing accreditation. Because we, how much harm have, have you seen in three years done to men? Too much. It's it, at least how many two, uh, how many a week? I, I'm not going to put a number in your mouth. I would probably say like at least, you know, five to ten a week. A week? A, a week. week. Disasters. Oh, like penile butchered implants, shit. cosmetics, shit. Cosmetics is huge here in Miami. People getting butchered and then they come to us as urologists and then you have to clean up their mess. Oh. Damn. 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 That is no, because, <laughs> no, because, but this is, I feel like that's the, that's the bigger problem because then how, where are these guys Okay, so the, the guys who, who now need your guys' help after, like, to clean up the fuck up, right? How did they get in contact with the person who fucked up Because, their dick? like he was saying, these beauticians, these primary care doctors that are saying they're penile surgeons and whatnot, they're throwing a shit ton of money into advertising. They get these people in with advertising. The guy doesn't know. He makes a uneducated decision no, because he, he thinks he thinks that that is the yeah, expert and that's the first thing they see on google i mean nowadays you google it but there are no reviews like oh this guy fucked it's me not over. even that no, but that's there's that's what blows me away there's a ton of bad reviews oh, okay yeah. then i mean i, yeah. I don't People know just don't do but i feel like research. this is criminal it, yes good word it is you can't sue these fucking people well no they you know they they have their money covered, you know. It's a, it's a shit show, it's, yeah. it's a It's a shit show. If there's one thing, every, every healthcare person you get on here, you need to, you know, keep teaching your audience to do your research, make sure their qualifications are are order, good. Yeah. I, it doesn't, yeah, you don't have to be a Harvard person. You can be a, a FIU. A, a, what, you just got to make sure they're, they're qualified and they're at least citing evidence-based medicine. And the, the, the problem is cash. Because cash is when you'll have somebody that'll say, I'll do it for cheaper. Mm. And then you follow the money. Easier, you know, easier, the, yeah. Thus the dentist doing breast implants. Are you are you able to disclose what like the price or how much it costs for a procedure like that? Or what? Maybe like an estimate or well, well, of, of this well, let's say for example someone goes to a beautician because they want to increase their girth or they want to do something, some procedure to their to the penis. How much would that cost you guys versus what it would be for some person? It's like, oh I'll do it here. I mean, we can't speak to what they charge. I know they do charge less because they're injecting one. Oh, uh, yeah, they're doing whatever. Like the guy in town, he injects silicone. He's able to do it at a less price. He says it's permanent. One, it's criminal. These guys are getting messed up, and they're going, oh, I'm getting something cheaper. Go and do it, and what you get is what you pay for, ultimately. We do yeah. ha hyaluronic acid by nature in the U.S. is expensive. Okay. So it's okay. expensive to do. For us, you're looking probably between, you know, somewhere between 8 and 12 grand. Okay. To get to where you want to do, which is manageable and it's done safely. Whereas That's, you're okay, going to Joe okay. Schmo and paying five and you're getting. Or, and, or if they fuck you up and then they got to go to you and pay twice as much Double. now just to get uh, yeah. it fixed off of the whatever they spent. To and I'm getting too old and tired to be cleaning up these messes. They're big cleanups. Okay. Yeah. Know? And it, it's the same for penile implants. Like if you go online and you look at cash pay penile implants and you look at the guys and girls that are on there, they might do five a year. If you ain't doing five a day, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. You know, so it cash corrupts in medicine. It, and here we are. We're back to this, with testosterone and, and, and PRP and, and, and shock. It, it, when the cash runs out because things are not effective, you know, people are going to stop paying for it. 
that, that that's when the science catches up. But the science is already there. Yeah. For everything we're talking about, whether it's testosterone, uh, you know, silicone injections, whatever. I, Are we I, over? No, 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 not no, at all. Because no, no. I saw you were about to, you were looking at something, you were about to say something before. No, because I, I, I guess like what I'm trying to get to is I just wish that they didn't see you guys as just doctors who fix things like fix fuck ups. Cause normally like I'm trying to get myself into the mind of these people that do that. And instead of them going to you to really to, to do the procedure that I want, I'm going to someone who I believe is a specialist when you guys are the specialist. I'm always thinking, well, you guys are doctors, so you guys are going to fix whatever my problems are, but I'm not thinking of the problem that was caused by someone else because of, me wanting to do the procedure instead i should just go directly to you guys it's not that you guys are uh curing like it, some issue that i have down here it's more of well if i need this for enhancement or if i need this for anything erectile dysfunction you guys are the direct point of contact not someone that you find online on a google search well I, i'm traveling tonight to go see my dad and i came here because I believe that you have an audience that it's actually going to be saved that's the point of this gonna, i promise you there's going to be 10 to 20 guys that don't go to this this butcher's office and there, there's a ton of people that do the same stuff in town i'm talking about stuff that's absolutely criminal so it, the reason i'm here before i get on the flight to go see my pop who's 92 is so that that shit stops yeah because I, I you know i get tired of doing revision surgeries whether it's implants or re revision treatments for you know, some of this silicone, we've had to cut out stuff and I'm got, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of doing bet, it. So yeah, this is a great venue, right? Yeah. Your, your demographic. These are the, right. the men and the, and the girlfriends that might be looking at this stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, don't let them go to some, somebody that's gonna, some you know, Joe it, Schmo. It, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, there's no, something to do and damage you. you can do it safely. And you get the good result you want. That's all you need in terms of male enhancement, in terms of anything yeah. in sexual medicine and mental health. Just do it with a provider who's a specialist and it's safe to do. Then you're on your way to a good path. Yeah, I'm man. Like triggered right now. It's I'm really, I'm really pissed off about it's finding out. Yeah. That. But you're doing a great job. Um, you know, you. that that the health shows that you've had on before. It's here to enlighten mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and to, wow. and this is not, uh, you know, yeah, like I said. Doctors are poor marketing people, and we need to be better. And the best way to do it is through societies. And societies are now, I, I know the, the societies I work with, we are striving to, to make patients aware of ongoing accreditation, who's safe, who's not. Yeah. Right. And we're really good at, you know, at, at, at policing, you know, certain things because right. there's corporate entities involved. But when it comes to cash, that's when you really have to watch out. And, you know, it, it, there's a, every day almost there's a story about a plastic surgery facility here in Miami where there's a serious problem. Well, there, so, yeah, there was one a case. So this is, I mean, for uh, a couple of years ago, I think there was uh, a clinic who did uh, they specialized or they were doing like uh, breast implants and there was the uh, people that were dying yeah. and they had to yeah. shut down. Then they reopened, they changed, they, they the, changed name. the name yeah. and <gasps> somebody died again. Yeah. And they so, the name. yeah, <laughs> which is crazy, but there's a lot of, you know, this is obviously happens to a lot more women who they get more surgery than whatever, but they either fly out of the country and then they die in Mexico, South America. And it's all to save a couple of grand when it's like, dude, this is your body. This is your, your health, health this your, is your life. life. And Just that, to save five grand or whatever? Yeah, they, yeah, see, the thing is... That's crazy. I, I did 14 extra years of education, right? Yeah. So I could hold a dick in my hand. <laughs> yeah. how, how funny is that, right? So, you know, go to somebody that, you know, whether it's breasts, vagina, butt... You know, your, your bones, you know, people yeah. do their research. Do your research on people that are well-trained. Actually, the best place to find out if it's if it's actually something that's in an operative setting, find out from recovery room nurses. There's no better source. They'll recovery tell you who the nurses. best breast implanter, the best knee guy, mm -hmm. hip guy, whatever, whatever you're doing. Sure. Um, and these that thus meet the penis where the patients have the questions. That's where, you know, and this is happening in, in most industries, it, you know, because there's these plastic surgeons, good ones that do great work. You know, they spend a lot of years and then, then you have these people that do a, like a cosmetic course in two weeks and they think they're good at something. You know, it's yeah. frightening. It's, it's scary. Terrifying. It's scary. Especially but in that's Miami. in cash. It doesn't really happen in insurance. 
Okay, because of the regulations that are, that it comes. There's with. a lot of regulations. Okay. It doesn't mean there, there's good and bad doctors sure. everywhere. Okay. You know? Awesome. Well, we we're looking up something. No, I was look because I was looking at the price for like the average of like a penile implant. Mm-hmm. Is, is it sixteen yeah. to nineteen grand? Does a son of a right? No. Way off? You said 8 to 12. <laughs> no, that was for that the was girth something different. Oh, that's girth. Penile oh, implant. Oh, no, you looked up penile implant? Yeah, penile yeah. implant. And they said 16 to 19? It's average on, on Google. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't. It's off? No, it's off. It's off. Because the actual <laughs> implant itself, the, the the piece that you put in, piece is alone. 12 to 14,000. Plus percent. Just yeah. that. Then you got a surgeon's fee. Then you got anesthesia. Then you got the hospital. Those are the dentists that are doing oh. the breast implants. <laughs> yeah. that are paying those prices. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. You got to be careful. That's the problem with Google, though. Let's yeah. tell you what it is. Yeah. I mean, shit way off. Uh, yeah, and a, a penile implant, they, that one you better you better you spend get, the right amount of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do your research. You guys um, are uh, self advocates of the your own procedures. You are guys? we members? You yeah, mean? members, <laughs> members, you members. Guys members. Is your member a member? Uh, you, don't, uh, uh, you don't get high on your own supply. Uh, <laughs> not yet, not yet. In a couple not years, yet, well, you're gonna have to do no, it. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's like you I, I, when, when I'm ready, which will be soon, uh, he knows how to inject now. Hey, so, yeah. so he'll do it for you. Fuck yeah! And then maybe in a couple of years, he'll do it for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm done come out of retirement, uh, <laughs> yeah, dust off the gloves, maybe. I'll do it for on myself on Oprah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll call her back in and say, "Come on, let's do this." Honey. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, um, man. Thank you so so much for coming on. And uh, these are the episodes I love the most because they, I know for a fact that people are going to be listening to this, and and they're a maybe they're afraid to ask the questions or they never even thought of just maybe apply it to them, you know? And so they're going to be listening to this and I know hopefully they're going to do their research. Maybe they can contact you guys. Just do your research. You know, be smart about it. You know, try to improve. We're all about self-improvement. Yeah. That includes your dick as well. And it's a starts from I like that. No, for me, it's more of like having the awareness mm. and knowing where to go to get the right information. Especially if, if, because I can just imagine a lot of guys who maybe are insecure. They don't want to talk about these things, but fucking open your fucking mouth and, and talk to somebody so that you get led to the right people, not just to someone because you want a van or you don't know who to, no, like speak up. And, and it's not just about, oh, I don't want to talk about my problems or I don't know, I feel weird. Like, no, everybody has problems. Everybody has things. It's what you do about them. Okay. So look for the fucking solution and then go after it, but do the right way. What are you? Yeah, no, no, finger. no. Yeah, no. <laughs> also, maybe this doesn't apply to you right now. You say, oh, my dick is working, da, da, da. But maybe in two, three, four, five, ten years, you're like, oh, shit, what's going on? And you're going to think back to this episode. And you're going to be like, Fuck. or if you're watching, ask your bro and make sure that he knows that he can find help. Take care of your fellow brother. Or your yeah, dad or something. Yeah. Your dad. Yeah. Or your, your dad. Your dad. Well, ask my dad. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. The point is, but ask, because maybe you can be the person that changes their perspective on this whole mm. output or what this whole kind of conversation. So it's up to you. So if you guys can do it, then go ahead and lead, lead, the, lead the pack to do so. With that being said, we do want to end the episode. And before we do, kind of blindsend you guys a little bit but i feel like it, it, it'll be very easy we like to end it with the final thoughts okay with that it could be whatever you guys want to say either to your younger self maybe to the general audience something that you live by that you're very passionate about um you could and then at the end you can sell yourself where they can find you and 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 everything like that uh, you can say it to the camera you can say it to us however you want stage is yours take as much time as you want got it it's it is like when when we we teach urologists you know because Basically, we say the same shit over and over and over again because <laughs> it's based on data that we have uh, accrued. But there's no doubt that I learn something new every single time that I'm around people that are, all they want to do is increase their fund of knowledge and spread it around. And so the more that we have these sorts of activities, for example, I've never thought you know, about testosterone in the same vein as, as, as a girth enhancement, but tonight because of... You know, what you have shared with us, sure. you know, it, take every opportunity you have for podcasts like this the, and to increase your fund of knowledge and then spread the, the word. I, I'm really, I, I get something out of every time I train, every time I come to something like this. And, you know, for me, the old fuck that I am to, to learn something <laughs> is, and, and, and I've done more than anybody in the world for 13 years of this stuff. So it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting. So Never stop the, the travels. That's what I think. I love that. What about you, yeah. bro? You got something to contribute? Yeah, I mean, first of all, thanks for having us on. We had a blast. I know, no, thank you guys. Thank cool. you for so making the time. Yeah, but picking back off what he said, I mean, 
constant education, not only for us getting better at our craft, constant education for the listener, the patient, you know, just being aware of there are issues out there that if you don't want to talk about, there are specialists that know what they're doing in terms of knowing how to treat you, how to guide you in the right direction. And there is stuff out there that can be done, whether it's actual, you know, an illness, whether it's cosmetic for men, whether it's anything, you know, there are specialists that can guide you in the right direction and treat you the right way without causing harm, which is why we came on to spread that word. So any guys out there need some urophil, need some girth <laughs> enhancement to have a happier home, you come see us at Perito Urology. I love that, dude. <laughs> nice plug. Fire, fire. So, bro, before we close off, just tell us where they can find you guys, the address. And so we're located at uh, 135 San Lorenzo Avenue, Suite 540, Core Gables, right next to Merrick Park. Uh, you can find us online at peritourology.com, at urophil.com. Find us on Instagram at Dr. Paul Perito at the Eurofill. Um, and office number 305-444-2920. And we're What's here. What's the 1-800 number? Do we have an 800 number? <laughs> you don't even know your own number. You want him <laughs> to say like one eight eight two two Eurofil oh, yeah. or nah, something. Uh, I hope. <laughs> you know, oh, <laughs> you got the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. We all know. We'll figure that shit out. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. With that being said, thank, thank you guys so much. much. Thank y'all. That was fun. Awesome. That was a lot of fun. <laughs>